My current guest is a trend forecaster who believes that current events form future trends. So with respect to the U.S. economy, what is to come today, tomorrow, and in the years ahead? Joining me now, once again, to talk more about this topic is Gerald Salenti, founder of the Trends Research Institute and publisher of the Trends Journal. Thank you for joining me. Oh, my pleasure. I'd like to begin by talking about uh, the Treasury Department. Uh, they've decided to extend bailout funds to a number of struggling life insurance policies. Now, this is in addition to the auto industry and the banks. Do you think Americans are aware of what's going on? Yeah, they know about it. It's a new trend. America is going from what used to be the major capitalistic country in the world, a free market uh, crusader, mm -hmm. into what Mussolini would have called fascism, the merger of state and corporate powers. So it's not socialism as people believe it is. Socialism is egalitarianism. And it's not communism where it's state-controlled monopolies. It's fascism, plain and simple. The merger of corporate and government powers. State-controlled capitalism is called fascism. And fascism has come to America in broad daylight. But they're feeding them it in little bits and pieces. First AIG was too big to fail. Mm -hmm. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, a mortgage company, too big to fail. Banks, too big to fail. Auto companies, too big to fail. We're, now we're giving money to the people that make the auto parts. And now there's talk about the technology companies wanting their piece of the action. Mm -hmm. The merger of state and government is called fascism. Take it from Mussolini. He knew a thing or two about it. What can Americans do if they are opposed to the road that the government officials are, are bringing us down? Well, the people really don't have a choice. There is no ballot box. You know, I'm of Italian descent, and I've heard enough mafia stories for the rest of my life. If you want to look at a mafia, you could call it the Republican and Democratic Party. And if you want to look at the two families, the heads of the mafia, all you have to do is look at the Bushes and the Clintons. They've been running the show now for some 24 years. We heard about Obama. He was going to bring in change. He had change you could believe in. He had change you could believe in if he's dumb, stupid, and blind. Look who he's brought in as his chief policy makers. Retreads from the old Clinton administration. It's a two-headed, one-party system. So it's very difficult for the people to vote in a new, a new administration that isn't part of the old one. Can you tell me one thing that you like about President Obama? In a trends journal, the top trends of 2009, one of our trends was that people were going to be putting out recession gardens. And now, as we're seeing the Obamas, they're planting their own garden, and that trend is being taking hold. So he's doing that in positive ways. He's bringing an element of dignity back to society. Those are positives. But now let me look at whether it's true or the hypocrisy. So they're talking about planting their own gardens. And they're talking about buying local. Oh, all that is wonderful. But on the other side of the coin, they're pushing genetically modified foods while they're eating organic. So it's like, let them eat frankenfoods, is the message. So I see hypocrisy at every level. When they show me truth and justice and the real American way, then I'll believe. If I revert to our previous interview, I asked you what kind of revolution do you think would happen and when would it happen why would it happen you said there would be a tax revolt and now we're hearing more and more about these tea parties what do you make of that do you think that that's just the first action in many actions to follow from the american public there's going to be a lot more this is just the beginning as the bronx boy my saying is when people lose everything and they have nothing left to lose they lose it. You're going to start seeing people taking to the streets like they do in other countries. People have had it. They're fed up. They can't afford it anymore. Look what's going on. 
Ten major states are raising taxes again. As people are losing their jobs, income is going down, they're losing their pensions, they're losing their investments, and the government is saying, more taxes, more taxes, more taxes. At the same time, what's happening is, on the top, they're changing the regulations so the thieves could steal more, just as they did with the new Banking Act. They call it mark to market. So what it's now allowing them to do, rather than putting the real loss of their assets, the toxic assets that they're holding, they're letting them make up what they want come up with fictitious numbers and you're going to start seeing bank stocks going up again. It's fake. And what they're doing is they're changing the regulations on the top so the big thieves could steal more while they're clamping down on the little people. And the little people have had it. This, these stimulus plans were both with former President Bush and with President Obama were rushed through so quickly. And you, you make a comparison to the way that the U.S. launched the war in Iraq with this urgency, urgency, urgency. Well, they push it through so the people are kept off guard. They put fear into the people's hearts. Fear. Remember the mushroom cloud that was going to explode if we didn't act very quickly with, with Iraq? And remember the financial system was going to collapse if we didn't save AIG? And who ever knew what AIG was to begin with? You know, what's an AIG? I never heard of one before, most people would say. When the AIG plan was rushed through, the only person outside of the Federal Reserve and Washington to sit in on that AIG bailout was Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs got $13 billion of taxpayer money so they wouldn't take a loss on the AIG bailout because they, they bet bad with AIG. Oh, and who was the Treasury Secretary at the time? Oh, former CEO of Goldman Sachs, Henry Paulson. Oh, and who did Obama bring in to run AIG now for the government? Oh, Ed Liddy. And where's Ed Liddy from? Goldman Sachs. The fix is in, the game is rigged. Forget about calling this government. Wall Street has hijacked Washington. So now what? We need a revolution. And we're going to be talking about that more in the future. And we're going to be announcing our plans for revolution in the coming weeks. And they're going to be much greater than the Tea Parties or the tax revolts. My morality and the way I was raised, there are two things in the moral code that are against everything that I was taught. And forgetting about the religiosity of it, but just about the morality of it. The first is that you don't kill innocent people. And the United States is involved in killing innocent people both in Iraq and Afghanistan. The facts speak for themselves. It has been proven that Saddam Hussein did not have weapons of mass destruction nor ties to Al-Qaeda. Yet the United States is still waging war in Iraq. And number two, this whole thing about Afghanistan taking over the country for whatever reasons, and the Russians know it better than the Americans, and the English knew it before the Russians. This has been going on and on. The Afghanistani people have done nothing to the Americans. And now, President Obama has sent another 21,000 troops into Afghanistan. So, killing innocent people is against my morality. The second part of the revolution, why we're calling for a revolution, is that we're getting robbed in broad daylight. The numbers and the facts, as we've discussed, speak for themselves. They're pickpocketing the little people, to pay off the big guys. This is against everything that has ever been taught to us in this country growing up as a free market society. It's fascism. When somebody calls you a doom and gloomer, somebody that's, that's scaring the public, what's your response to that? My response is, suppose you go to a doctor, and then you feel that there's really something wrong with you, and the doctor gives you a diagnosis. And the diagnosis may be cancer. 
Do you call the doctor a gloom and doomer? It's the fact. People better grow up. The ship has hit the iceberg. It's sinking. We're telling people, just as the doctor would tell the patient, look, there are ways out of this, but first we have to recognize what the disease is. And then we're going to have to be very inventive about trying to attack it in a number of different ways. We could go through complementary medicine, we could go through traditional, we could throw, go through a combination of things. But you respect what the doctor is saying, you don't call him a gloom and doomer. It's a childish response that people have that want to believe that they have a new leader and the new leader will lead them down the yellow brick road of happiness. Rather than understanding there's nobody behind the curtain. It's the Wizard of Oz. They better grow up. Nobody's going to save them. So when we put out the information, we're saying, this is the direction things are going in. This is where we believe it's going to end up. Here are some strategies to consider so you don't go down with the ship.